tonight on Size Eyes on the Skies. As we take a look outside here, we've got a bunch of clouds. I don't think these are supposed to be here. I'm not sure. Now we're looking at Memorial Union. I think. I'm not sure. I can't see. We've got a bunch of clouds, gusty winds. I'll have that and more coming up for your Iowa forecast. Plus, Trey Rex has a look at the national forecast. Size Eyes on the Skies for Tuesday, October 26th starts now. Live from Studio 171 in Ames, Iowa, the Iowa State Meteorology Department team of meteorologists brings you the latest weather from around the country and out your front door. Iowa State's longest running television program and the only live weather broadcast on campus starts right now. This is Size Eyes on the Skies. Good evening. I am your host, Maddie Wiesenberg. We begin tonight with our weather story. On this date in 1982, a strong storm system produced severe weather followed by snow across the northern half of Iowa. During the day on the 19th, thunderstorms swept across the region, bringing quarter-sized hail for 10 minutes at Cleghorn in Cherokee County. Over 3,000 pounds of ice accumulated on the scale at the Farmer's Co-op Elevator. Later that night and into the morning on the 20th, snow fell across the area, with Sioux City reporting 8 inches their second highest October snowfall on record. Other snowfall amounts included eight inches at Akron, Howarden, and Sibley, seven inches at Rock Rapids, four inches at Cresco, two inches at Decorah, and 0 0.8 inches in Des Moines. It was also on this date just last year in 2020 that a quick intense band of snow brought the first accumulating snow of the season to areas in Iowa along uh, and north of I-80. Amounts ranged from two to four inches with isolated higher amounts along a line from Des Moines to Belle Plaine to Cedar Rapids. Amounts in Ames were generally an inch or less. To discuss more on what's happening around the country, here's Danny with our national forecast. Well, I'm Trey Rex here, the meteorologist. I am a meteorologist. Giving you a look at your national forecast, here's a look at the sky cam here this evening. Really not much going on, but as we look at the national picture, big storm system. This is going to be more of a threat than I am, the T-Rex, but as we look to the northeast here, we also got another system that we are watching here, a very prominent nor'easter. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a moment. Now here's Trey Rex with a look at what's happening around the nation. Across the nation this evening, we have a very active weather map right now across the United States. We are looking at one large storm system right now pushing into the central plains where we are expecting severe thunderstorms to break out from north Texas back up into Kansas. Then as I wobble out of the way here, we also are looking at a very big nor'easter right now currently off the east coast of the, of the U.S. Uh, that system is going to bring a lot of wind and big time rain for areas up to the northeast. So here's a look at the national headlines here for this week. We have that central U.S. severe threat. I'm also tracking a nor'easter that will bring a lot of wind and rain. And then a dry, cool pattern will set in to follow that here as we get into next week. Here's a look at the uh, watches and warnings right now. You can see we have flash flood watches in effect from Boston down the I-95 corridor into the New York metro area and then extending back up into insta upstate New York and portions of northeastern Pennsylvania as well. Then we get over here to the uh, <clears throat> central U.S. where we are looking at our next storm system. Have a tornado watch that has just been issued for western Oklahoma back up into west central Kansas and a severe thunderstorm warning firing up there. Wind advisories across the high plains of west Texas back into New Mexico this evening. So there's a lot going on right now. Here's a look at the uh, national map once again. You can see this dry line is the culprit for thunderstorm activity right now from West Texas back up into Oklahoma. That is where we could see a threat for damaging winds, large hail, and the possibility of a couple of tornadoes as we get into this evening. Your SBC outlook, this is the threat, not the T-Rex, but you can see right now from southern Kansas back down to north Texas an enhanced risk of severe weather tonight with a squall line of thunderstorms that is expected to develop. And then as we look at the severe weather outlook tomorrow, Gulf Coast states here from Houston back east along the I-10 corridor over towards central Mississippi also have a slight risk of severe weather there. 
So as we look at the future cast, you can see that squall line of storms really breaking out tonight from the I-35 corridor from San Antonio back up to Dallas. And then rain extending up north of that here up into the Missouri River Valley, up in the portions of Minnesota and Iowa. Then as we look over here over to the northeast, we also are looking at our nor'easter that continues to bring quite a bit of heavy rain and strong gusty winds there. That system will move out tomorrow. And as you can see, as we move it as we advance forward there, heavy rain right now from the Gulf Coast up into the Missouri River Valley as we get into the day tomorrow. The system is going to spin and occlude here. It's going to become cut off from the main flow of a jet stream. And so with that, we're going to see a lot of heavy rain here. Look at these rainfall amounts, two to three inches of rain for portions of eastern Kansas back up into Missouri, one to two inches here for parts of Iowa, and then a half an inch to an inch here across parts of the Deep South. Looking ahead at your upper atmosphere here, you can see what I mean with the system becoming cut off from the main flow of the jet stream. Really deep upper level low here, but following this upper low, we see a ridge that begins to build in here toward the desert southwest as we get into the day on Friday. And then as we zoom ahead here into the uh, Sunday period now, we're looking at a zonal flow setting in. So cooler and drier conditions up to the north where we have these lower heights and then warm, seasonably warm conditions down to the south. Here's a look now at my Select City forecast. This is for Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Cyclones will be playing this weekend. 50s and 60s over the next several days, and then we are looking at rain chances coming in for the weekend. Temperatures in the upper 50s, and those rain chances will stick around into early next week before temperatures begin to cool off once again. Thank you, Trey Rex, for that forecast. Now, let's take a look at tonight's trivia question. When is Halloween thought to have originated? A, 4,000 B.C., B, 2,000 B.C., C, 0, or D, 420 A.D.? We'll have your answer coming right up. Now, let's have a look at the week ahead with Dan. Thank you very much, Maddie. Uh, as you can see, the trivia question is now displayed here. Again, the answers are 4,000 B.C., 2,000 B.C., Year 0, and 420 A.D., so have to take a look at that and give it a good thought as we progress into the Iowa forecast, hopefully eventually. So we take a look at this beautiful background here. We've got blue, uh, some sort of trapezoids here, I think. And then the bottom, blue trapezoids. As now we finally look into the week ahead. It's all in the headlines for Iowa. So we have breezy conditions tonight and tomorrow as something that low passes through in central United States. Rainy weather soon associated with that low. As Trey said, one to two inches potentially. And then nicer weather for the weekend more uh, seasonal for this time of year and some more sunshine. So we take a look at temperatures outside. We have 56 here in Ames, 55 in Fort Dodge, 57 in Des Moines. And if we take a little more east, we got 51 in Dubuque, 53 in Davenport, and 54 in Burlington. So a little bit seasonal, uh, but those will drop off as we head into tonight. Take a look at wind speeds. So you see as that low is now kind of progressing, you can see kind of the cutoff. So you have stronger winds out of the southeast at about 24 miles an hour in Spencer, 22 in Carroll as that moves east. But you see on the east side of the state here, 6 miles per hour in Dubuque, 10 in Davenport, and 10 in Burlington. So those haven't quite made it uh, across the eastern portion of the state, but it will get windier as the day moves on tonight and into tomorrow. Let's take a look at satellite and radar here. So again, over the past six hours, not a lot has gone on. Uh, there is just a lot of cloud cover in the area, obviously, with this low passing through. So it's just kind of an overcast day uh, with no precipitation going on in the state. With that, of course, we always look at the drought monitor. So here in Ames, we have the most drought of severe drought. We have a little bit of uh, severe drought as well in east near Davenport and Dubuque. Uh, but most of the state is in good conditions or even just dry conditions um, due to the weather events from this past weekend, Sunday and Monday. So that's good to see. And as we see coming up later this week, including tomorrow, we will see some more of that rain. Let's take a look at future cast here. So 4 a.m., so we see some of those storms move in as that low tracks east. Storms in Sioux City, Omaha, moving into Spencer and Carroll as they move kind of north and south. So it's a bit of a weird track, but this whole system as a whole will move east as we progress throughout the day. So now again, noon, so we have a bit of a track of some isolated showers here from Mason City, Waterloo, and Cedar Rapids. But again, the strong weather system here, western Iowa into South Dakota and Nebraska will eventually pull its way east as we go throughout the day. So 4 o'clock, it weakens a bit, but moves further east now moving into areas like Ames and Des Moines. And if we take a look at 9.30 tomorrow night, some big rain showers moving into central Iowa. And then as the day progresses into Thursday, those storms will move east and drop a lot of rain. And as Trey was talking about, this low will kind of occlude here south uh, near Davenport and Lamani there in south Iowa. That will give them a lot of rain as it just kind of sits over the area. 
So taking a look at some forecast lows for tonight, so 46 in Spencer, 46 in Fort Dodge, 50 is a high point in Council Bluffs, and then we take a look at the eastern side, much cooler, 43 in Decorah, 41 in Dubuque, and 42 in Davenport. Taking a look at the highs, a little bit cooler than today. Uh, again, 52 in Spencer, 53 here in Ames, 54 in Des Moines. A little bit of a warm spot here in Davenport and Burlington as that low won't track eastward until later in the day. So they get, might get a little more sunshine and a little bit more warmth. So taking a look overnight tonight at Ames, breezy, some possible overnight showers with a stray thunderstorm or two. Drop down to a low of 46. And again, those winds are going to be strong out of the southeast at 15 to 20 miles an hour. And then into tomorrow, we have widely scattered storms. Again, some thunderstorms may pop up. High of 54, and again, winds out of the east-southeast, dropping a little bit to 10 to 15 miles per hour. So taking a look at the week ahead here in Ames, so again, that rules rain showers, stick around. 54 tomorrow for a high, 50 for Thursday. And then as we head into the weekend, Saturday's looking beautiful, high is 60, and then those highs drop back a little bit further down into the upper 50s and lower 40s. Thank you, Danny, for that forecast. Let's review tonight's trivia question. When is Halloween thought to have originated? A, 4000 BC, B, 2000 BC, C, zero, and D, 420 AD. Uh, Trey, what do you think about this answer? I know you've got a lot of knowledge inside that noggin of yours. <laughs> oh yeah, inside this big T-Rex head, but I'm not sure on that one. I'm gonna have to go uh, guess 4000 BC. 4000 BC, that's a good guess. I mean, that was the closest to when you're alive. What do you think, Matt? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm really feeling like it might be 2000 BC. You know, I'm just going to go on a hunt say it's 420 AD. So let's let's, let's see what let's this see. is. Let's see. 4000. 4000. That boy Trey. Well, Trey. I didn't, I didn't Trey know. Rex. Okay. That boy Trey, the, his, the history buff. I should have known there's a lot of good knowledge there in that. Yeah, well, he was there. That's true. That's true. He was, well, don't remind him of the asteroids. Oh, it's yeah. a little too recent for him. I survived. You survived. I'm a survivor. Oh, you know what, Trey? I love to hear. Yeah. I love to have you here on set. We really are. And that concludes tonight's show. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can find every show on YouTube under our Size Eyes channel. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you later. Good night.